going to be talking to Kerry. Kerry is one of our community champions and she works for um, Arch and I just want, I'll get Kerry to introduce herself, but I just wanted to say that we've been working together since oh, about July, I think, of this year. And I think mm -hmm. that, um, I don't think I'm wrong in saying that Kerry's really passionate about um, the work she does and the people that she works with. And we've worked together really well, I feel, um, mm -hmm. sort of supporting those people and really listening to the voices of the people that Kerry works with. So over to you, if you could just tell us a little bit about your role and the organisation. Yeah, so um, I'm Kerry and my role within ART is as a sexual violence counsellor. So I work with over the age of 14, helping support people who've experienced sexual violence at any point in their lives. And that is um, what we do at ART Teesside. So we support men, women and children um, of any age um, who've experienced sexual violence. So that could be um, anyone who's experienced it historically um, or recently and we support people who are thinking about reporting to the police or have reported to the police so that's our advocacy service um, so our ISVAs um, support people all the way through that process from reporting all the way through to court if, if, it, if it was to get to, to, to that point and then us as therapists we work alongside that as well so to help people kind of work through um, what is coming up for them um, working through their kind of psychological um, impacts of sexual yeah. violence. Um, alongside that, we do have um, a couple of play therapists who well as well who work with our under 14s. And um, so, as I said, I work with the over 14s um, to any age, but they work specifically with the under 14s and they go out on an outreach basis to schools, work with our children, and um, to help them work through what is going on for them. And yeah. um, over the years, we've 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 developed. Um, so many other projects to ensure that everyone is supported um, who have been impacted by sexual violence. And we know that sexual violence doesn't just impact our victims and survivors that we work with, but also the families as well. So we have something called the Light Project um, that works with our parents and caregivers of children who are accessing the service. So that very much offers a support for them as well. Um, I do also deliver some of our training, so our sexual violence training and our pre-trial therapy training, um, which I'll explain a bit more about in a minute. Um, so I'm very much um, passionate about kind of getting the message out there around what sexual violence is, um, what happens to people when they experience trauma, um, any myths and stereotypes. So very much about some of the work that we do as well as smashing some of those victim blaming attitudes and helping challenge and change that culture. Um, that we're in where people blame people for um, what has happened to them, where, um, you know, the conviction rates are very low. So we're very much about trying to make sure that um, people are heard and people are believed. Um, and when I said about the pre-trial therapy, I think that is worth mentioning as well, that, you know, there's a, um, a misconception that people can't access therapy while they're going yeah. through that criminal justice process. And that just isn't the case either. Yeah. Um, so we, we um, work with people who are part of that investigation who are part of that process because as you can imagine you know the court backlogs at the moment it is taking a long time for for people to get to court and um, it's taken quite a few years at times so then to say to people actually you can't access support yeah. through that time um is really harmful um to yeah. people um who've experienced trauma who've experienced sexual violence so um we developed a protocol with cps and cleveland police um quite a few years ago now so we offer that and then last year we um, were commissioned to train a lot of the different services in teesside to make sure that they were equipped with that information as well so hopefully no one should be turned away from campton services in in the middlesbrough and teesside area um, yeah armed with this protocol really um yeah. yeah, as I say, there's yeah. a lot there's a lot going on. Um, you know, what I haven't touched on is our prevention work that we've got going on, um, going out into schools and education settings, helping to equip our children, young people around things like consent, um, kind of digital stuff, pornography, healthy relationships. So it's we're very much a wraparound service. Yeah. Um, at yeah. side ensuring that you know we're supporting people um who've been impacted by sexual violence, but also looking at okay, how do we try and prevent that stuff as well you know in, in so because we're always in the after you know so yeah be great to, absolutely yeah um, yeah kind yeah. of get there before really. yeah yeah absolutely so do, is that those programs are, are predominantly sort of Middlesbrough and Stockton area or is it 
across Teesside? Um, so prevention at the moment um, is was Middlesbrough, but I think there's some work happening at the moment to look at um, look at how that then may look for the future, which is yeah. really exciting. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, our prevention work is is getting into some of the, the, the a lot of the secondary schools at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the youth clubs, um, like, you know, you focus links and, and, and links project, things like that, that, you know, where those clubs are already really well established. So yeah. you know, if we can go in and kind of get those kind of um, sessions and workshops done um, while kids are already there, which is is great. You know, it's a great skill to, to help. And I think the feedback that's happening as well is 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 really great for the prevention program and the yeah. light project as well, because it is it's filling a need, it's filling a gap. It's yeah. things that aren't. Um, and already offered or they're yeah. offered but in a, maybe a different capacity yeah and are you finding that people that 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 people are coming to you and asking for it do you need do you need more venues to deliver it do you need more community what about community groups who might want to sort of um who might be working with vulnerable people what about what about them can they contact yourselves um, to deliver for training yes i guess yeah. for any training um for sexual violence training sexual violence awareness um to help kind of challenge some of those judgments some of those um misconceptions that, that people have yeah. around sexual violence and sexual abuse um you know people can always get in touch with me directly and kind of see you know yeah. actually can you train staff sometimes there might be a cost you know sometimes there might not be so i think it is definitely worth you know anything that we might be able yeah. to provide um, as I say, I deliver a lot of our training um, with with one of the with some of the other members of the team, yeah. and um, we deliver quite a lot to different levels of police at the yeah. moment. You know, so that's great that you know we're always in um, yeah. in different levels of police as well. So when they're first starting, kind of in that apprenticeship role, but also we've got so we've got detectives. You know, so yeah. it's very and much is it it's an ongoing. Face or is it like um, on online that you usually do or very it probably be both. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, it's depending on what people want I guess yeah. you know some of the, the sexual violence training that I deliver is interactive it, it is designed to make people think um, yeah. and to check in with themselves as well around any kind of biases that they might have any yeah. um any kind of judgments that are kind of maybe that they weren't maybe aware of as well and and because sexual violence you know it is it is a difficult topic for people that yeah. that, that aren't in it or haven't experienced you know I, th I think people um the, the walk around kind of the notes there but it's 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 over there so they don't really have to kind of think about it or or, or, or deal with it you know what happens yeah. to um some of the the, the judgments and, and myths that we challenge is that you know sexual violence doesn't just happen to types of people you know yeah. that sexual violence can happen to anyone and yeah. by anyone yeah. as well and and i think sometimes people you know because of the way that the media portrays it as well at times you know it, it looks like it only happens to some people and yeah by by certain people like you know strangers and people yeah, in dark absolutely, alleys absolutely absolutely and I think that that's one of the things that I've probably learned through working with you is that um you know it can literally affect anybody and everybody um I mean you're just so passionate about what you do mm. and you know obviously we speak really regularly and I just think that, um, you know, people need to be aware that it, it can be anybody, can't it? And, yeah. and, you know, and we can, in terms of why we work together, and I suppose um, I'm kind of moving on a little bit onto the, the, the health watch side of things, but mm -hmm. you from my point of view you you really do share so much information. It's absolutely invaluable. Mm -hmm. um, so can you tell me, why you did become a community champion and, and and maybe tell me a bit about how that sort of how because how we've supported each other really yeah so i think it's um the reason i became kind of a community champion is because what what i hear kind of from my clients is the barriers that they face um across kind of tea side with maybe other the services or accessing other forms of support and um, because we know that when trauma impacts people that it does have a knock-on effect to a lot of different areas of people's lives as well um and because of some of the kind of presenting symptoms which i don't, I don't like using the word the word symptoms no. you know that that can really um stop people from from contacting services or being missed or fall through the gaps you know so the reason i became a community champion is is to help advocate for the people that we work with so that way you know these are things that people might not think about um when it comes to working with with trauma or working with sexual violence you know for example 
you know, I've had clients who are, are really struggling kind of accessing their GPs, you know, because they have a fear of going out, you know, they, yeah. they, uh, they really struggle to go out because of what they've experienced and because what they've experienced, they've not had any specialist support for a long time, which means that their anxiety then has, has grown to a degree where now that prevents them from leaving the house. Yeah. And, 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 and who, who supports those people? You know, if that person has a medical issue, and they can't get to the GP surgery, you know, and it, and or they maybe they're scared of the phone, um, which again is 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 something that comes up quite a lot. Where what happens, you know, where do yeah. those people then seek medical support, medical advice, you know, and because we live in an era where it's so easy, isn't it, to access um like shopping via online, or yeah. so you you never really have to speak to someone if 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 you didn't want to. And I think actually, you know, we're, those people need support. What and how can yeah. they access and you know, I think because of the way the medical model kind of works as well, you know, a lot of people are kind of put into boxes. We're human beings. We don't fit into boxes. Yeah. Um, and trauma impacts people in so many different ways. There is no right or wrong way um, yeah. to, 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 to deal and respond to trauma either. And, and sometimes that might look, um, that might look completely different to kind of a, a medical structure, um, yeah. which means that people are, uh, are not able to access the right support at the right time when they want it. Yeah. Um, so, so, think, it's, yeah, and I think that, um, you know, we, we kind of, we've been able to sort of come together and speak to um, some of the some of the people involved in sort of the medical medical side of things really and and look at that and look at different ways and I think there is a sort of a change coming in in sort mm -hmm. of look at recognizing everybody as an individual and not that you know you're going to get one box and just be able to tick the boxes mm -hmm. and everybody will go through the same route and I think that that's really important that that's been recognized from sort of your services side of things but also from sort of the medical side yeah. of things and I think being able to bring the two together hopefully is going to be vital really yeah definitely and, and I think it's not about um criticizing or anything like no. that it's about making people aware that there's other ways yeah. um to do things that you know that the way that maybe has always been done isn't necessarily the, the right way um but also just just you know people that can get so wrapped up can't they in the fact that they are busy or that you know there's yeah. long waiting lists or that there's you know there's we've seen an increase in in demand for services and not just us but I imagine across the whole of Teesside yeah. so you know you know people are, are at capacity but we're dealing with human beings yeah. you know complex human beings you know and they deserve to be treated with empathy and compassion and and especially for people who've experienced trauma you yeah. know people people do struggle and it is going to take time um and and I think sometimes that's the bit that gets missed is some people sometimes it can you can get so wrapped up in what it is that you're doing that you actually you know take time to talk to that person you know asking yeah. them what they need what what is going to be beneficial to them you know very much yeah. giving them choices empowering them because that way you know they then will be able to, to do and think about what what they want and what's going to help them you know so it's yeah. very yeah I am passionate because I, 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 I believe in people, essentially yeah. in people's ability to yeah. recover. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it just, it shines through all the time, Kerry. So um, I know that there's quite a lot coming up at the moment. You've got mm -hmm. um, the 16 days. Can you tell, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, it's, it's a UN campaign. Um, so it's the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. So that starts on the 25th of November which is the International Day to Eliminate um, Violence Against Women and Girls. Um, so it's also known as kind of White Ribbon Day as well, which is the kind of the other side of that, where, you know, um, the campaign for men to kind of look at, OK, how do we advocate and look at how we challenge um, violence against women and girls? Um, but the 16 days runs from the 25th of November all the way through to the 10th of December, which is Human Rights Day. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's you'll see things where you know the the color the theme of the campaign is orange. Um, yeah. You know, so it's very much about um, it's very much about raising awareness around kind of gender based violence. But the UN also re release like a theme every year as well. Um, so this year's theme is about kind of uniting kind of the campaigns that happen and so on the back of kind of Me Too. Yeah. Um, on the back of um, all the, the sports um, abuse that's kind of came out so it's about kind of uniting everyone to have like a, a community voice really yeah. and, um, and and focusing very much on on, on survivors and, and empowering 
um, survivors to have their voice and, and to be heard, essentially. So some of the things that we'll be doing is is raising awareness, obviously, of our service, because, again, that is um, there's still a lot of people in Teesside who don't know that we're here. Yeah. Um, so so raising awareness of the work that we do um, to support victims and survivors of sexual violence, but also to um to look at where else we can challenge that so any ideas and things that you know how people can get involved in yeah. in campaigning you know whether that, even that as simple as signing petitions or writing to your mp about about you know making sure that the victims bill for example or that any consultations around violence against women and girls promoting some of this stuff that's out there like the gov campaign you know the yeah. the enough campaign yeah. that's out there at the moment and um, the government released their second phase of that last week um, so you know, there's lots of ways that people can get involved, essentially. Yeah. But the message essentially is that, that if, if people have experienced sexual violence across Teesside, you know, you are not alone. You know, we're here when you feel ready. You know, there is no pressure yeah. to report. If you don't want to, you know, we can support you regardless yeah. of if you report yeah, to the that, police. But... That's really important, isn't it? That, that, that there isn't that pressure on yeah. people at all, because I think that people, you know that there is that concern that you know you're going to get sort of pressure to do that and you know that that you know i've seen that you, that just doesn't happen at all no no it's about giving people power and choice yeah. about what they want at the end of the day yeah. because you know when we're talking about sexual abuse and sexual violence you know power has been taken away from that person you know something something horrific has happened to them and yeah. you know the last thing that then people want is to be told that this is what they need to do, or you need to report that, or you need to do this. And actually, you know what? You don't you need don't to do to. anything. Yeah. You know, you you do what is that is going to be right for you at that moment, yeah. and we will help support you and give you options and choices and go, okay, if you don't want to report right now, that's okay. These are your options. You know, yeah. if you do want to report, this is what it looks like, or yeah. this is what counselling looks like. You know, it, yeah. or maybe you're not ready for counselling and that's okay. You know, yeah. it, so it's, it's, people can make decisions based on the information that they're given you know and yeah. if people aren't given that right information then how do they make exactly they make exactly choice? yeah absolutely and um so um thinking about um things that are happening from from sort of a health perspective is there any particular um challenges that people are facing at the moment that you're working with is there anything that um is coming up at all for people on a health perspective point of view. I know we've talked about accessing the GP and how difficult that can be, but is there anything um, else that's on the horizon? Um, I think just that, you know, what we're hearing a lot from people is just obviously, obviously like most people, is that there's long waiting times, you know, yeah. for, um, you know, if you're, if you're on a particular pathway um, and you've been referred into other services, you know, unfortunately there is, there is a long wait um, for people. And I think as well, I think, you know, people, I suppose it goes back to the fact that if people don't know that we're here, people yeah. can't access maybe the specialist support that's, that's needed. Yeah. And I um, think well that, times. yeah, and I think it's about working together, isn't it? And yes, there might be a long waiting list for a certain element of it, but actually in the meantime, there is so much other other stuff that's going on within our communities, like yourself, like a lot of the organisations who we work with, who are community champions, who in that interim period are providing that support and it's being aware that it's there yeah. and it's um, it, it's everybody sharing what, what they're actually yeah. doing because there's elements that some of our champions do um, that works alongside with what you do as well, you know? So I, I just think that, um, you know, it's it's really about raising that profile of what is available to people. Um, it, it's the same within sort of. There's a lot of changes within GP practices, isn't there? And and it's the same about understanding that. Yeah, you might not always see a doctor, but there's somebody else who can yeah. support you. So <laughs> that that things are changing, but it's communicating that and yeah. letting people letting people know about that. And I think that that's really important. Yeah. I think that's it. The communication, I think, is 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 the most vital thing for for anyone, no matter what field you're in. You know, yeah. is you know, if, communicating messages effectively and letting you know the people that you work with, whether or not that is you know you're a GP surgery or any other organisation. You know, yeah. if, if people don't know that things are out there for them, you know, or if when they do try and reach out, that you know they are maybe treated in the right way or listened yeah. or heard. And I think you know. Th 
for me that is that that's the biggest thing for people yeah. is, is is for you know especially the, for people that we work with you know you have you have to believe you have yeah. to believe in people and, and believe in what they're saying as well you know yeah. whatever you, whatever your background whatever your biases or judgments are you know life is really difficult for people yeah. you know and especially for people who've experienced trauma yeah um, and sexual violence you know it, all it takes is is for you to 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 spend some time listening to that person and it, it doesn't take everything away no but it, but it 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 makes life better for that person yeah. in in just that interaction you know and yeah. which might then help that one that one person then yeah. access another support so it's it's all yeah little neurons kind that, of firing <laughs> yeah and i think that you know that people who can't access services and things and it, you know we would it, absolutely that's what our sort of health watch information and signposting is all about isn't it you know about mm -hmm. letting people come to us and let us know what's happening and you do that you do that really well in terms of the people you're working with but even people who aren't working with you they can come to us they can they can text us they can email us anonymously and it's just letting us know if those things aren't working properly as well yeah. and that's how we that's how we really want to to learn about anything in sort of from a health and care point of view really yeah, yeah. and i think that's i think that's the other thing that's great about being a community champion is it's not as much as i know a lot of the the stuff i share is about the people that i work with but i know i've i've came to you about any issues i've had as yeah. well with, with with um kind of you know dentistry or um, yeah. any other issues you know which has been really useful as well so it it's it you know that role of kind of community champion you know as much as it, it's a it's a great role it's it, it essentially what we're doing is just communicating on what's yeah, working what isn't working yeah um you know what are you hearing kind of on the front line what what maybe needs to be done because that's the bit isn't it you know we, as a society i think we're very good at talking about what doesn't work but yeah, we're but not very good at kind of okay well, we'll come up with a solution what what would help yeah. what you know what would what would what would help the people you work with or what would help yeah. you um so I, I just think you know it's it's just great to have somewhere where you can go as well and I think you know that process for me is is running parallel I guess with the people that I work with you know in terms of you know I I listen and support them but then I, I've got a place where I feel listened and heard as well about some yeah. of the challenges that um that are placed or that are in the way um for my clients yeah too. yeah absolutely Oh, thank you so much for speaking to me today, Kerry. So if anybody wanted to get in touch with you, whether that be in an individual or maybe an organisation or um, I, I know that um, GP practices can 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 they refer to you or what? what? Yeah, I can. Yeah. So um, anyone in Middlesbrough who, yeah. who wants to access counselling can do so. So our referral criteria is on our website as well. Yeah. Um, so on our website, there's a um, www.htside.org. Um, oh. So there is a um, there's a, a referral um, tab, and in that referral tab, it's a self referral or a professional referral, and you fill in those details, and then you just go direct to our referrals team. So we've yeah. got an encrypted system; it just goes straight direct to them, and then our referrals team will make contact either with that person or the referrer just to get some more information. And yeah. um, that's usually complete complete. It's quite a quick turnaround for that, yeah. and then they'll be put on the relevant waiting list, whether or not that's for counselling. Um, or for adv advocacy so yeah. the advocacy service so the is for service um runs across is t's wide so yeah. anyone in the teesside area who has reported to the police um and access us um obviously for counseling it is a little bit different but we yeah. do explain that um like you say it is on our it is on our website as well yeah. um but if they needed any other materials like leaflets or anything like that you know to drop me an email um that's not a problem. We can get some either posted out. We've also got some posters. We've got um, we've got stickers that um, we like to put on the back of toilet doors as yeah. well. Um, you know, because sometimes, well, you know, people aren't really sure at times if what they've experienced is sexual violence either. And sometimes yeah. it's just about knowing actually, you know, you can ring us up and say, actually, I'm, I'm, I don't know what I need. And, yeah. you know, we are a rape crisis centre as well, um, which yeah. means that, you know, our umbrella body which is rape crisis england and Wales, on their website they have a lot of great and valuable information as yeah. well um to help people and they've got a helpline and a live chat service as well yeah. so again it, it's it's even if you're not ready for that direct one-to-one -one support there is other other places that yeah. maybe you can tap into and then and then maybe well, actually do you know what now i feel ready to yeah, access yeah, that support absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. thank you so much for um for speaking to me and um 
we'll put some details on of how to contact you sort of yeah. with the with the um, podcast as well so thank, thank you very you. much all right take care thank Bye. you Bye. Bye. stop the recording